This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for this program is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. I'm Mamie Shannon. Welcome to Local Color. I'm so glad you guys are here with me. I missed you, John. We're glad to be here. <laughs> so obviously we're going to talk about some movies. Good. And Chris, you've got the new ballet ensemble coming in. I do. So who all's coming? I've got uh, Katie Smythe and some of the dancers from New Ballet Ensemble to talk about the, the mix of jukin and ballet that go into the Nut Remix. Uh, you know, Pat's daughter Violet cannot say enough about it. That yeah. is, this is one of her favorite events. I can't wait to hear. Yeah. Have you guys heard about It's a Wonderful Life radio play? The Tennessee Shakespeare Company. Yes. It, have you heard about it, John? No, but I'm certainly familiar with the source material, the movie. What year did that movie come out? 1946. Okay, so what they're doing is the movie, the, the production is going to be at uh, Dixon in the um, gallery, the auditorium. And what they're doing is they're building a set, and it looks like the 1946 radio stage. And there's seven actors that are doing all of the parts. Right, and sound effects and so forth. And they're doing old commercials and everything as well. The Tennessee Shakespeare Company has been branching out from Shakespeare for a while. In the last, last season, they did a Truman Capote Christmas story, and they did uh, some Tennessee Williams. So they're, uh, they're stretching. Now this is going to be through December the 16th, 7 o'clock, and then Sundays at 3. Um, and also one thing to note on December the 13th, it's free for kids. You that, know how I love that. I, I like free for kids. <laughs> I do too. I'll put on my short pants. Put on your short pants and go and enjoy <laughs> the show. Um, so... Chris, have you have they done this before? Uh, there have been versions of it done here before Playhouse in the Square has done it. Uh, this is the first time for Tennessee Shakespeare Company. Like I said, last year they did the Truman Capote Christmas. I remember that. Yeah. Cool. John, don't go anywhere. Uh, we're going to talk about movies in a few minutes, but first, Chris is going to be right back with a special guest from the new ballet ensemble. Dancing. <laughs> Ballet slippers, toe shoes, old school Adidas, all of these things tell a Christmas classic, yes? Yes, but we have to say Nike because they're our sponsor. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. However it works. I think they may own everything by now anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> but for nine years, the new ballet ensemble has been reimagining the Nutcracker. That's right. Let's go back in time and tell me a little bit about how we go from a Nutcracker to a Nut Remix. Well, I've been dancing the Nutcracker since I was eight years old. And so I, I thought it was time to change the story a little bit to make it more local, more inclusive, and more contemporary. Um, and plus, there's a beautiful Nutcracker here, a traditional Nutcracker in Ballet Memphis. It's fantastic with the Memphis Symphony mm -hmm. and absolutely gorgeous. So we don't need to replicate anything. So it's just kind of fun. And it's all those theater genes that are in me too. You know, I was a child of the theater as right. well as ballet. Um, and did a lot of experimental theater in Los Angeles. So, um, and my mother always wanted me to be a writer, so this is how I get to make my mom happy too. I got to write a new story. And it's fun because we change the story depending on the young people who are involved in our program. Right. And, and young people are game changers. There's, they're the ones that feel the cultural shifts before anybody knows they're there. And so they've really been the collaborators that have pushed this forward. At, and at what point do you really start beginning to bring the, uh, the street elements of the hip hop dancing, the, the very Memphis specific jukin to bear on these classical, the, the classical elements? Well, from the very beginning, I wanted a hip hop battle because I never liked that Clara threw a shoe at the mouse and that he died. I don't want anybody dying in my ballets. <laughs> okay. I'm a very peaceful person. I don't like a lot of confrontation. And what I love about hip hop is that it really is a culture of peace, peaceful 
Um, you dance out your battles, but everyone loves one another in the end. Even when we're aggressive, when we're dancing, it's all about love and harmony and getting along. And so I, I wanted this to be sort of a healing dance for the community. And so initially I thought hip hop battle, it makes sense. It's, it's kind of, it's not a gang. It's more like West Side Story, which I, sure, sure. you know, the we'll, rats we'll and the snap soldiers. At you. Yeah, yeah, we'll snap at you, we'll do a little of this. Um, but it, it can be aggressive without being confrontational. Sure. I don't know if that makes any sense, hip hop. But the joking came into it because of the artists. I mean, every change that we've made in this story, and it does change a little bit every year, and in, in the artistic makeup, has been because of the current um, gathering of artists who are involved at New Ballet, a specific talent that they have. We're at this weird point in history, I say weird, this sort of great point in history where um, this Memphis style of dance is being recognized nationally, nationally. and internationally um, and both as something that exists as a, a pure folk form but also something that is really making inroads into classical dance across the spectrum. Mm -hmm. I mean we see little Buck touring with Yo-Yo Ma and doing these performances. Mm -hmm. how, how, how much do these things mesh? How much do they conflict? How hard is it bringing these two mm. distinct things together? That's really interesting, and I, I think I think Gene can really speak to that too as well because he's been a part of the program as long as Lil Buck. They joined the program at the same time, so initially they joined the program so that they could receive more classical, technical, foundational training because they were in high school. Right. They were at Yo Academy, and they needed more technique. And their teacher Taryn Gary brought them to New Ballet, and we started partnering. And so they performed. Everything was very I, I hate the word, but segregated. You know, it, here's sure. the hip hop, here's the ballet, here's the African. Here's the flamenco. They all existed in these separate pots. But the beauty started happening through chance performance in the studio and playing. So if Gene walked into the studio and I had on a Mozart quintet, he's just so naturally graceful and musical, as is Buck, that they would just start, you know, well, you have to do that, not me, but they would, <laughs> they would just start moving to the music. And I see ballet in everything. I'm a ballet bunhead, right? So to me, it's all ballet. Well, maybe, so, maybe you guys can flip the script on that and tell me how you saw the, the more hip hop elements in the ballet. Um, usually, when we see ballet being done, you could always see like a hip hop move in it. So when we take uh, like, let's just say a jete in ballet, you can always just take that and, and then just hit the snap of your left foot, go behind the right foot. You can always spin on it, or you can go backwards. So, or you can juke out of it. Or you can juke out of it. So we got a new twist on an old favorite. We've yeah. got a lot of Memphis coming to an international classic. I want to thank Katie. Uh, for being here with us today and the members of New Ballet Ensemble. <laughs> if you're planning a movie night this weekend, stay tuned. Next, we're going to talk to John Bifus about what's playing now in your neighborhood theaters. I miss you, John Bifus. I'm glad you're back. I'm glad to be back. We got a lot to talk about. We do. Okay, let's just go ahead and jump right in. Lincoln. 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 Well, that's everyone knows, I guess, that's the new Steven Spielberg. Uh, it's not really a biopic of Abraham Lincoln. It focuses very specifically on the effort to get the amendment passed in the House of Representatives that would abolish slavery. So it's really timely because it's, it, it sort of shows the nuts and bolts behind the scenes machinations that are necessary to get even a progressive, you know, even a, something good passed, re, to even get something that's good passed requires a lot of, I don't want to say villainy, but even on the part of a hero like Lincoln, there's some ethical compromises that have to be made. So the movie's relevant to the political process that we see going on right now all the time. So it's been going on for centuries. Right. And also, isn't that, a, isn't that a better way to do a biopic instead of like trying to get yeah. every little, you know, just to spend a little bit of time on every bit of the life to really focus in on a key, a key point in the, the Yeah, person's. I like that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And Daniel Day-Lewis, it truly is superb. I mean, he, he walks with this sort of stoop. He affects this high, sort of high-pitched voice. Nobody really knows what Lincoln sounded like, 
But the thing that to me was remarkable about the performance is it has no, to me it had no actor's vanity. Like usually when you see an actor like Laurence Olivier and he's got a costume on and he has an accent, you sort of can see behind his eyes this sort of self-satisfaction about what a good job he's doing in the role. But to me, Daniel Day-Lewis as Lincoln really looked like a creature from another age. Like he seemed like he was behaving as much like a person from the 19th century could behave in, in what my idea of that would be, which obviously is just imagined. But We know Sally Field's really been hitting the circuit hard, talking about how she got the role and her role as Mary Todd Lincoln. How did she do? She's, she's good. She's fine. Uh, I've, you know, it's... I still remember seeing her as the Flying Nun. I know, the Gidget, I know. Was, Gidget was a little before my time, but the Flying Nun was right there for me, and, and she's I, fine. I'm, I come in there right about Smokey and the Bandit. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So she's good. Tommy Lee Jones is great. Every actor in it. Henry Thomas, the little kid from ET. Yeah. That Steven Spielberg directed. He's in there as a soldier briefly. So I would I would definitely recommend Lincoln. And and for people who like historical detail, the design is. Extraordinary. Yeah, the, the design is great. The photography, the, the the script is so nuts and bolts about the political process that the beautiful cinematography is almost a contradiction of the realism of the script because every frame is suitable for framing to be redundant. But <laughs> but it works. It works somehow. So I would definitely recommend Lincoln. Well, going from Lincoln, I want to go the other the other way. What about Wreck It Ralph? You know, I guess I'm a sap, but I love Directed Ralph. I really did. Have you seen that one? I, I haven't, haven't seen, seen it, that. and I'm dying to go see it. But you well, know, take the kids. yeah, it's you know, it's sort of like a Toy Story in a video game milieu, where in Wreck It Ralph, it, the movie imagines that when the lights are out and the gamers have gone home, the the video avatars in a video arcade come to life and they interact and they have their own personalities and everything. But this is by Disney, not Pixar. And the Pixar movies are great, yeah. but they, they, they really grab you by the lapels and insist that you recognize how great they are. Yeah. And, and this Wreck-It Ralph is a little looser, a little more mellow. It, it, it has a good message about friends and family and all that, like and, every animated you know, let's film. Ma- but let's face it, Disney always has a good message. You know, that's one thing that they do really well. Right. And plus, the, the video game premise is made to order for digital animation. So you have all these different characters, like guest appearances by you know Pac-Man and and the M- Mario and all these real characters, and they all look different and they all work. And so it makes the movie really visually fascinating. So I liked it a lot. Well, one thing that sounds visually fascinating to me is Silver Linings Playback, and I'm just going to leave it at that. Have you seen it? Uh, yes, it's Silver Linings Playbook, actually, Playbook, if I may yeah. correct your your language there. But well, uh, Silver... I would like I would like to play it back. I yeah. love Bradley Cooper. <laughs> Bradley Cooper is great. Um, <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence, who I always thought she looked a little bit like a teenager, which I guess she was or maybe is, but. Come on! She's fully grown now, and she's incredible in this. Uh, yeah. Robert De Niro, who has, to me, has not made a good movie in a long time. It's been time. a while. It's been a very long time. He's almost been in, in, in some really bad, embarrassing movies. He's great in this. And this is very much a modern screwball comedy. And, you know, screwball is a slang term for crazy. And so this sort of literalizes that concept, because this is a screwball comedy about people who might, in fact, be crazy or at least borderline uh, disturbed. Bradley Cooper gets out of a uh, mental hospital. He begins to start a friendship, kind of a reluctant friendship with Jennifer Lawrence. Who, who is, has her own uh, issues, Who right? has her own issues. And they're, Robert De Niro is Bradley Cooper's father. He's obsessive compulsive. Uh, and somehow it all works. And it really, it, it, it has a happy ending. That's not giving anything away. But unlike a lot of these romantic comedies, this movie really earns its happy ending. Like, you don't feel like it was contrived. Like, you feel like the characters really deserve their happiness. So I, I, I recommend Silver Linings Playbook highly. Well, now, Anna Karenina, um, this is the Tolstoy adaptation, correct? Yeah, and to be honest, that train couldn't come fast enough for me. Well, and I'm so I, I didn't I'm like so Anna sorry. Karenina. It's a 19th century, you know, affair. Well, uh, that, what I, you know, it's done in this style by the director Joe Wright, where it's done sort of like a musical, even though it's not a musical. You've probably read about this, Chris. Yeah. How it's like a theater piece. It, it basically takes place in a 
repurposed open theater. They move the flats and the sets around as characters move. Uh, people react and to things in choreographed synchronicity. So it's really stylized. So in a way, so it deserves credit for trying to do something new with an oft-told story. But so it's that a little Emma, a little it. Kung Fu Hustle. <laughs> yeah, but I love Kung Fu Hustle, and uh, I like. It's, it's very hard for Kung Fu Hustle to take itself as seriously as Anna Karenina. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and like I, it's just you know, and people always often tell me that they didn't like a movie because they didn't care about the characters, and usually when they say that, it means the characters were evil or bad guys, and that that never causes me not to care about characters. But honestly, watching this, I did not care about Anna Karenina or. Uh, the Count, her lover, I just didn't really care what happened to him, so. Well now, Killing Them Softly is set in New Orleans, and this has got some pretty heavy hitters in it. This is Brad Pitt, Ray Liotta, uh, James Gandolfini, yeah. so obviously this has got a mob link, it's I'm a, guessing. It's a modern, <laughs> well it's set in 2008, and it takes place at the start of the uh, presidential campaign, and the um, corporate bailouts, and it ends during Obama's inaugural speech, more or less. So it has a so it has a very heavy political message going feel. on, in which it connects the Most gangsterism and the mobsterism to corporate culture. And that's an that's an old theme in gangster movies ever since the Depression. And The Godfather, of course, made yeah. that famous. The Corleones were just practicing a different type of Capitalism. Right. All the way back to John Gay's Beggar's Opera. I'm, you know, the, the criminal Mac the Knife says he's going into banking because it's safe when he takes your beggar's Right. I mean, this is not right. a good idea. Right. And this movie pummels you in the face with this idea, like the way a couple of the thugs in there pummel Ray Liotta, the difference being that you won't vomit blood, but you'll still get the message. But uh, having said all that, I still liked it a lot because it's very rare to see a movie, especially with stars in it like Brad Pitt, that doesn't offer any redemption to the characters. I mean, this won't make people want to go see it, but nobody comes out of this movie a better person oh. than when they started, and that's pretty <laughs> rare in a sort of sort of a major release movie. Yeah. So the message is so obvious, but it's also kind of audacious in its cynicism. So I want to see Killing Them Softly again because I'm not quite sure if I liked it or not. Yeah. Or I liked it, but not sure, quite sure how, quote, good it is. And but it's directed by Andrew Dominic, who did the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford a few years ago. And I love that movie. That's one of my favorite movies of the past decade. So I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt and see this again and see if it rises in my but estimation. But you know, John, every movie that you've ever said, I really want to go back and see it again. When I've seen it, I'm like, wow, that was really good. So thanks for that. Oh, well, good. You know, <laughs> uh, now tell me about Rise of the Guardians. Well, it, it just... It didn't do well at the box office. It's another animated movie from DreamWorks, digital, digitally animated. It bothers me. Well, I, the, the animation is stunning. I mean, it really is one of the most beautiful looking movies I've seen in a long time. It's right up there with the Pixar animation. It's sort of a Justice League or Avengers of children's mythical or bedtime figures. Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, the Tooth Fairy, and the Sandman recruit Jack Frost to go into <laughs> battle against the Boogeyman. So the Boogeyman is like their Thor. But the reason this movie bothered me is like they're, because... they're Loki. He, yeah, they're, they're Loki. I'm sorry. Thank you for correcting me. Yes. He, the Boogeyman is their Loki, and it's Jude Law, and so who could have just as well been Loki as Tom Hiddleston, well, for that matter. But the reason it bothered me, like, when, when you watch these uh, specials like A Charlie Brown Christmas, well, that one is, is blatantly religious. But, right. But, like, the original How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the Chuck Jones animated version, it's not religious but it has a, a message of, of faith, more or less. But this movie really does posit that if you take away toys and eggs, kids will stop believing in Christmas and Easter will die. And oh, I, even I found that offensive. So well, we got to end on that happy note. Thanks, okay. John. Well, thanks for having me. <laughs> um, next, I'm talking to Anna and Abby from the Mem Shop event coming up in Overton Square.
so glad that you guys are here with me. We're going to talk about Mem, Mem Shop Holiday Pop-Up, right? Yep. yep. Okay, and this is such a great concept. Abby, tell me all about it. Sure. So from December 6th to 23rd, we're going to be popping up. Uh, local retailers, entrepreneurs, and makers will be at Overton Square. We'll have over 40 vendors plus two pop-up shops, a community cafe, and various classes. Okay, now this is really cool because this is in the spaces that aren't currently occupied at Overton Square. Right. And what we're trying to do is show people a glimpse of what can be. Absolutely. And we're doing this at such a great time because it's, I love the small business. Actually, I came down and saw the uh, spaces during Small Business Saturday. Mm -hmm. And I went to Maggie's Farm and started my Christmas shopping. Excellent. And the, the place looks beautiful. So you're going to have, tell me about the vendors. What kind of vendors are you going to have there? Sure. So the local Etsy team, which goes under the brand Indie Style Market, they have a collection of over 40 different vendors. So you can get your candles, your home goods. They'll have art, jewelry, clothing, pretty much anything for anyone on your gift list. And now you tell me you're also going to have like how-to classes. Exactly. We'll have demos um, pretty much every day, anything from making your own candles to book binding to belly dancing. So if I come and make a candle, can I take it home with me? Definitely. Awesome. <laughs> and do I have to wear like a anything that shows my belly to do the belly dancing class? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. Anna, it's so good to see it's you. Good to see We've you known too. each other a couple of days, haven't yeah, we? Just a few. I'm so proud of this. <laughs> it's really exciting. It We're really is. Bringing all this activity and love back to, you know, to Midtown and stuff and really celebrating, a, you know, it's a great kind of tie-in, I think, of the action and the love and the passion that so many people have for Everton Square and um, talking again about how we're bringing all that back in the future. And you told me that you're kind of um, not only in all the shops along Madison, but what are you doing inside where the ice skating rink used to be? You're doing something really special in there, right? Well, that's where the vendors that Abby was just talking about are going to be. All the Etsy um, um, artists will be there selling their wares. Awesome. And now what, what are the times? The, the market will be open Thursday through Sunday. So Thursday will be open from 4 to 8. Friday and Saturday will be open from 10 to 8 and Sunday 10 to 6. Now tell me about the big thing that's going on Friday night. Um, next Friday night from 530 to 730, Santa will bring be there to light the Christmas tree at Everton Square. Girl, and it's this Friday night. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Okay. These holidays are really sneaky. I know, up, I know. But yeah, so Saturday, so Friday night, um, Santa will bring there. He will light the Christmas tree for us, along with there'll be live music and um, the holiday market that night. The, all the vendors will be there. Shopping will be available, so you can come over, eat dinner, shop, go to the theater. Can we see get our Santa. picture made with Santa? You absolutely can get your picture made oh, with that Santa. That's so cool. But bring your own camera. It is. Oh. Um, we are letting. It's people good, taking their good. own. Good. You know what? Yeah. I like that so much better because if you've got someone there that's set up, it's it's almost like I really wish that I would have gotten that candid shot but you don't feel like you can so we can right yes yep. this is candid with Santa I love <laughs> that so what about the all the restaurants and everything that are at Overton Square it looks so good they're gonna be open and everybody's gonna be open and ready to serve dinner oh man okay now listen I've got um, also Friday the sachet pop-up demos include color mash what is color mash so there's this new trend for women, and I guess men too, it's about hair chalking. It's a temporary way to add color to your hair for a few days, and they're going to be there with their style team kind of showing people how to add those reds and blues to their hair. Oh, I love that. And then um, on Saturday, a pistache French French pastry pop up? Yep, she's going to be popping up. She's new to Memphis. She's been here about six months and she's going to be popping up a little cart so you can get some holiday treats while you're oh, at the market. Man. And then what is the Cosmic Collective? That's from 11 until 1230. So the Cosmic Collective is actually one of our pop-up stores. It's um, There'll be a cafe, healthy food, vegan food, smoothies, juices, that type of thing. Oh, my god! And then they'll be running a program that has belly dancing, kundalini yoga. They'll have community music classes. And now it says the indie style market, That's for, that starts at 1130 and goes until 1, and that's the Echo Friendly can, Candle Making, the book binding, and um, music by Kate Lawson. Yep. Awesome. Now, what about Sunday? It sounds like you got the whole weekend planned. Yep. Sunday, we'll have the, the two pop-up stores plus the style market open, and we'll have music from Will Graves and Chris Milam. Oh, that's so exciting. Y'all, please come back. And this goes until December 23rd, so there's no excuse. 
go out and join the and have fun at the mem shop holiday pop up thank you anna and abby in just a second chris and john and i will talk about memphis traditions for the holidays Well, Chris, I can't believe that this is the ninth annual uh, ballet, what is it, remix? Nut remix? Nut remix, yeah. Well, I was telling Katie I couldn't believe it's been 11 years since they started up. I mean, on one hand, it seems like yesterday, and on the other, they've become such an institution in that short period of time, it seems like they've been with us forever. And, you know, how cool is the Mem Shop? That's going to be exciting. Are you guys going to go to Overton Square and shop? Oh, probably. Yeah, sure. Don't As get me a belly shop. dancing lesson for Christmas, John Bifus. Do you hear me? All right, a hula dancing lesson. It hula is. is fine. Hula is fine. <laughs> and then also um, the holiday movies. I can't wait to go catch some holiday movies. They're a great way to go. Number one, get away from the family. Or number two, go and be with your family, but you don't have to talk to them. That's what we give my little brother for Christmas. Do you really? Yeah, he's a blended family, and so there's like, when they go, there's like, you know, 30 of them. So they never get to go as a family unit, so we give them a gift <laughs> certificate so they can all go. It's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for joining us. Come back next week and go out and enjoy your holiday local color.